Uh, thank you, MFJ, for the coffee cup. Hello, CQ, CQ YouTube from KA5WPM. That's right, five words per minute is here. And if you're like me, you've been watching Steve Ellington's videos here on YouTube where he's been exploring the end-fed half-wave dipole. He's done lots of experiments, made some excellent videos how to wind the toroids, and I thought I would give it a try. And during the process, I may as well make a video about it, stick it up on YouTube, and see if it helps you in any way. So, let's look at what I did. All right, this is the toroid in question here. This is on the Facebook group uh, that Steve Ellington has started called End Fed Half Wave Antennas. So you may want to go and join that Facebook group, keep up on everything. And you can double click and you can see here is the toroid. Uh, these are the toroids that I believe I ended up ordering right here. However, I did order different capacitors, which you'll see in a minute. But it really comprises of a couple of wires twisted together. The first two rounds um, come back out and the blue wire, the initial wire here, ends up going around the toroid 14 times and going on to your antenna. So let's look at the video I shot when I laid all of this out on my pool table here in the living room and uh, try to decide how long these wires needed to be before I started and how I wound them together. Okay, I was going to make an unboxing video to show you uh, these components as I got them out, but it was such an insane amount of packaging material that I decided to spare you all of that anguish. Uh, first of all, what I got uh, right here, you see this is the copper wire, 14 gauge enameled copper wire. I ordered this off of Amazon. You can look this up uh, if the camera will focus and uh, order that. This is, as you see, approximately 40 feet. So that's what I'm going to use. Those are five. I believe they are 100 picofarad, 3000 volt. I got five of them. One of them is going to go from the center conductor to the shield. Now, it took all of that packaging material on the left there to send me these five little things. I can get it to focus. This is the paperwork. You can see the number there. At the top for these capacitors is C330, C101, or 101 I should say, JHG5TA. This is the information on the toroids and this is the number that I ordered. Part number 5943800. 3801, 5943003801. I'll put these down below in the description. And those came very well packaged uh, in some kind of a static sensitive device handle only uh, box. There was no danger of these getting broken in transit. So we're going to wrap our transformer onto that. I wanted to mention that I ordered the toroids and the capacitors from Aero, uh, Aero Electronics online. And you may be wondering how much these cost, how much it costs really to make this uh, transformer. The coil of wire on Amazon was $11. The uh, toroids were $3.88 each. So, you know, do the math there. The capacitors, amazingly, were $2.64 each. Piece. So the capacitors are one of the most expensive things of the whole process. You know, you've got like $13 worth of capacitors. But all together, the whole thing, maybe $30 to $32 worth of materials to make this. Okay, so what I did is I rolled off, oh, about 5 feet. I think this is about a 60-inch piece of wire and a 20-inch piece of wire. We'll see how much too much that is here in a little bit for winding this uh, this particular transformer. I just took and put uh, some zip ties on here. Uh, I know you can put some super glue on and glue them together but I may want to take this apart later on and make me a different something else so I'm not going to get that permanent yet. I'm just going to leave it like this and uh, I've got a drill over here for uh, twisting up my wires there so let me get that done. Okay so I took it over to the shop and I chucked it up in a vise with some cloth so it wouldn't damage it and I twisted together 
of that 20 inch piece with the 60 inch piece right there. Now what is supposed to happen is that this spot right here is actually going to connect to the center conductor of your coax when you get it wound around the toroid twice. The other ends down here are going to uh, get it, these two ends here are going to be cleaned up, soldered together and they go to the shield of your coax and to ground if you want to want to ground it. Especially important to ground it, have a counterpoise of some kind if you're going to use it as a quarter wave on a bit frequency like 160 meters. So anyway, we're at this stage. Now this twisted part has to wrap around the toroid twice and come back out to the center conductor and you keep wrapping the rest of it until you have a total of 14 turns on the toroid. And what I did before I even started the process is I went ahead and I put these bins on the end of the wire so that it would be easy to take that wire and stick it up into the toroid and have it coming right out of the center. Okay, so I've gone around it twice with the twisted portion of the wire and as you can see I've twisted way too much wire here. We came in the center, we go around it once and then right there is one full turn it goes around it again and then this is two full turns so this needs chopped off this little stub right here needs to be way back here to hook to the center conductor so let me get that trimmed off and I have about nine inches too much so that 20 inch wire could have actually been about 12 inches so now we know a foot will work if you're winding two toroids now I've trimmed it off and these two here will end up going to the shield of the coax and this one here is going to go to the center conductor and on in the future one of those 100 picofarad capacitors goes between here uh, to raise it up into the foam portion. Okay so here we have uh, the shield, the first round, two rounds, three, four, five, six, and seven right here so we can't come back up here again instead uh, we go over to the bottom on the other side we go over there now you notice that as I wrap this I go in from the top I'm going this direction and I want to do the same thing over here I want to come in from the top however you don't just go around and go around and go around then go over here and start going continuing on in the same direction while this one is wrapped this direction, in other words, clockwise you would say, uh, around the toroid, then over here, this one actually starts and comes up over here on the far side, comes in and it wraps this direction around it. So they're wrapped, this one goes this direction, this one goes this direction. Now whereas on this side I started in the center and every time I came back around to the center I counted this as a full turn, on this side I'm actually starting on the inside bottom. So it's not until I get back to that inside bottom that I'm going to count it as a full turn. Like this right here. Once I get back to where I started I'm going to count that as a full turn. So I'm going to do that seven times on this side, six more and then I'm going to come out the end here which is going to go on and attach to the antenna, the actual wire. Okay so here we have it. We've gone through to the other side. Let me turn it over here and this is where I consider it starting right here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six and this is the seventh full turn so this is going to go on out to our wire antenna and this is out of our 60 inch wire we had, by the time I trim it off, I'll probably trim 10 inches off. So 50 inches would be the minimum, depending on how much you want here. 50 inches, 5-0, would be the minimum you want to start with here. 50 inches and 12 inches. Okay, so I found an old SO239 out of the back of a CB radio that already had this cool little washer with the tabs on it. So as you can see the uh, center conductor is going to the uh, single wire and the double wires are going to the 
ground lug there and I have put a 100 picofarad capacitor between the center conductor and that other little lug there. Okay, so this is a PVC cap that I bought at the hardware store and uh, I put the toroid of the transformer up in it and uh, the walls are very thick so I ground them thinner here so that the SO239 would stick through far enough uh, to get a coax to screw on it with enough threads that I uh, trust it a little bit more but you can see it's in there now I've run it I've run the uh, antenna wire out over here so right here I will uh, attach me a 134 foot uh, in antenna and then uh, I'll either temporarily uh, wire nut it together or maybe even solder it eventually but for testing purposes I'm going to make it as temporary as I can and yet still uh, get the results that I can trust. Okay this is what I've got you can see the SO239 there on the bottom with a 100 picofarad capacitor across it uh, there's the ballon I wound and then uh, the antenna wire comes out right here. I've just got it wire nutted to my actual way heavier than I need antenna wire. Okay, so I pulled up my 134 foot antenna uh, between a pine tree and my tower and got it strung up there and played with it a little bit. Decided I wanted to make it a little bit shorter so I folded it back to 133 feet, tested it some more and uh, and then I decided I was going to I fold it back to 132 feet, which I just do by rewrapping the end of my wire. I'll show you the video here where I recorded that. Okay, now I'm done here at the shortening end. This is the string coming down here to the end of my antenna. I've already folded it back a foot, so I'm just going to unwind this, uh, measure back a foot, bend it again, wrap it up again, pull it back up again, and we'll see what changes. Okay, so after shortening up my antenna and sticking a coax through the window here of the shack, I just kind of hooked it up real quick. It was getting a little RF in the shack on 20 meters, so I so I ran the coax through a toroid here a couple of times up to the feed point, and that took care of that. I've got to get a proper ground here on it, but I've got to tell you guys, I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, right now, my 2 to 1 SWR, when I spin through, I run an ICOM 7300, and from 3450 to 3920, less than 2 to 1 SWR, on 80 meters, 75 meters, uh, 40 meters, 6850 to 7320. That's my 2 to 1 SWR width. 20 meters is ridiculous. It, it works so good you think you're on a dummy load. It is right now less than 1.3 across the entire 20 meter band. 1.1 uh, at the top of the band. Uh, 17 meters, very good, no problem. 15 and twin meters, it's too high right now. But I've got to say, I'm impressed. And like I said, it, it works so good on 20 meters you think you're hooked to a dummy load, but I have talked to New Zealand and I have talked all over Europe with that single little wire, the 132 foot wire. So I'll have to say the transformer is apparently working and I'm pretty well sold on an in-fed half wave. Seven threes.